you, we magnify your holy name. O oh Lord of heaven, we give you all the adoration, all the worship, all the praise. We honor you, we exalt you. We thank you because you are God. We give you the praise for a wonderful service in your presence. Thank you for what you have started. Thank you for where you are taking us to. Thank you for your leading, your guidance. Thank you for your spirit, your presence. Thank you, Father, because you never leave us. You never forsake us. Oh, God, we give you the praise. Thanks for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us your word, oh, God. We say, blessed be your name, oh, God. We want to worship you. We want to adore you. We want to exalt you. We want to magnify your holy name. We want to thank you so much for all that you do. You are God. You are faithful. You are merciful. You are kind. You are loving. Oh God, we stand in awe of you, oh God. We glorify your holy name. We magnify you, Father. A million tongues will never be sufficient to give you thanks. Oh God of heaven, we want to worship you. We want to adore you. We want to exalt you. We want to magnify your holy name. We just want to say thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done for us. We want to say thank you so much for loving on us. Thank you for keeping us, for sustaining us. Wonderful Savior. Thank you for not leaving us, not forsaking us. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for the universe. Thank you for the cloud, the sky, the sun, the moon. Thank you so much for our parents, our siblings, our children. Thank you so much, oh God. We say blessed be your name forever and ever. What a mighty God you are. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You are the best. You are the greatest. You are the mightiest. You are awesome. Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. We worship you in majesty. There is no God like unto you. There is none that can be compared unto you. Oh, Lord of heaven, we are excited to be in your presence. We love you with all of our heart. We love you with all of our souls, all of our bodies, all of our mind. Oh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, God, thank you so much for everything. Father, thank you for today. Today is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice. We will be glad in it, oh, God. We are excited for bringing us into your presence. We are excited, oh God. We want to say blessed be your name forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory, Father. We say blessed be your name forever and ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much for everything, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want us to ask God to speak to us this evening. I want us to ask God to speak to us as we go deep into the word of God. I want us to ask God that Lord speak to us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to hear a word from you, a word from the throne of grace. A word directly from you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to us, speak to us, speak to us. In the name of Jesus, speak to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Speak to us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Speak to us, speak to us, speak to us, oh God. Give us a word. Give us a word. Give us a word. Give us a word. Give us a word in due season. Father, we are asking, oh God, oh Lord of heaven, speak to us, oh God. We want to hear directly from you. We want to hear from you, Father. We are praying, we are praying for a word from you in the mighty name of Jesus. We are here. We left our homes, oh God. We came into your presence. I mean, our lives are in your hand. Wonderful Savior, we need you. We are like Mary, oh Lord, sitting at your feet to learn from you so that you can speak to us and tell us exactly what to do. Ah, because this part, nobody can 
take away from us. Lord, let the word that we speak, O oh God, let it not be enticing words of man's wisdom, but a demonstration of your spirit and your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are asking, O oh God, speak to us, O oh God. Let us hear you clearly. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the breath of life, let it be on your word in the name of Jesus. Father, let the breath of life, let it be on your word. Breathe upon your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We say, blessed be your name forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want us to ask God for mercy. Every opportunity we come into his presence, we have to ask him for mercy. The Father, straighten us out, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Straighten us out, O oh God. We want you to straighten us out. Have mercy on us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. You let your mercy prevail in our lives in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh God, that you will straighten us out in every area of our lives that is not right. Anything that you don't like, Lord, put us right. O oh Lord, uproot that which is not yours. Lord, whatever will prevent you from taking us to the next level, next height, Lord, take it away from us in the name of Jesus. Destroy everything you have not planted. Demolish anything that does not glorify your holy name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are asking of you, O oh God, as we come into your presence, O oh God, straighten us out, O oh God, touch us, breathe upon us, O oh God, be glorified in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We are asking of you, O oh God, that let your name be glorified, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Brethren, today uh, we, we, we've, we've finalized the series of wisdom on wisdom is planning. Planning, 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 planning. Wisdom is actually planning. Hallelujah. But I want us to ask God that Lord, as from today, help us as a church that we will plan. We will plan for a year from now. We will plan for what is going to happen this Sunday. We will plan for Wednesday. We will plan for every single time. Wisdom is planning. Lord, give us what it takes. Help us to plan adequately in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to plan adequately in the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking of you, O oh God, the wisdom, O oh God, to be able to plan, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Give it unto us. Let us understand the wisdom behind planning, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are asking of you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us. We are asking for help, O oh God. We are asking for your help, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, help us, help us, help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us to plan every time, to plan for everything, to be well prepared, O oh God, for the future, to be well prepared, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Wisdom is planning, Father. We are asking for the grace and the anointing to be able to plan accordingly in the name of Jesus. Father, help us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus to plan oh God give us the wisdom to be prepared father above all we want to plan for heaven we want to live our lives right every day in preparation for our maker that Jesus you may come anytime we will be ready we will we want to continuously be watching in the name of Jesus to watch in the mighty name of Jesus ah Bible says we should watch for you know not the time that Jesus will Will come lord ah this is us watching that when it's time for us to go to church we are in church when it's time for us to pray we are praying when it's time for us to serve you we are serving you lord in the name of jesus we are not playing around but we are in your presence ah the appropriate time we are ready father help us so god in the name of jesus to be ready for your coming in the mighty name of jesus we say blessed be your name forever and ever in Jesus mighty name we pray Lord 
I'm grateful for this privilege to be able to share your word. I will never take it for granted. Thank you, Father, for making us the ministers of your gospel. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you open our eyes and let us see clearly. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this word, let it not be enticing words of man's wisdom. Father, breathe upon it. Let it bring forth fruit in 30, 60, and 100 fold. Let us walk out of here knowing what to do. In the name of Jesus, Lord, ah, anoint me, anoint my lips in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, wisdom is planning. And I want to say this, that I need a lot of wisdom in this area to plan for a lot of things. I need a lot of wisdom in this area, I'm telling you. I need a lot of wisdom. Wisdom is planning. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus to be able to plan adequately in a lot of areas of our lives. I mean, people plan for, reti people plan for retirement. People plan for college. People plan for exam. I mean, be, be prepared for various things. And the mother of all planning, it doesn't matter what you plan for if you are not prepared for heaven, if you are not prepared to meet your maker. It doesn't matter what you, what you plan for. You just have to be prepared. And Jesus Christ told us a million times that we have to be ready. So that is the most important thing is to be prepared to meet our maker. But you are said to be wise when you are prepared. You are prepared. I'm telling you. Can you remember the story of Joseph? You remember the story of Joseph when Joseph, I mean, in Egypt? When there was famine in Egypt? When the, the, the king had a dream and God told uh, the king, in the, in the uh, Pharaoh, in the dream, that uh, there's going to be seven years of plenty, and after that, it's going to come seven years of famine. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that them knowing all of this and not plan adequately or be prepared for the seven years of famine? Can you imagine how many of them would have died? Can you imagine? So planning is, uh, is key to success in a lot of areas. Planning is key to success in businesses. It's key to success in ministry. And we are going to, God will help us in this church to do a lot of planning concerning various things in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will give us the grace and the anointing for that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's go into the Bible. Uh, let's start with Proverbs 24 verse 3. Proverbs 24 verse 3. I'm going to read the new, uh, 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 I'm going to read the, uh, the translation Bible, New Living Translation Bible, everybody. So it says here, any enterprise is built by wise planning. Any enterprise is built by wise planning. Any enterprise is built by wise planning. So imagine that. Any enterprise. So uh, KJV says, through wisdom is an house built. It. Can you imagine you want to build a house? That is the work of the people they call the architect. They call them the architect. What is the work of an architect? To put together a very good plan. So we already know where the rooms will be. We already know where the bathrooms will be. We already know where the uh, family room, the bedroom, the masters. That is planning before they begin to build the house. So the Bible says any enterprise is built by wise planning. Becomes stronger through common sense and profit wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. You see how important planning is. KJV says, through wisdom, is a house built it. And by understanding, it is established. Through wisdom, it's a house uh, built it. So, planning is very, very, very important. Planning is the master key to accomplishment. Planning, if you want to accomplish something, 
You know, if you want to be a doctor, you have to plan for it. You have to plan. You have to be prepared for the number of years it's going to take you. You have to know exactly what courses, what classes to take. You have to be prepared. That is planning. Planning is very, very important. So all of us, we cannot just allow things to happen all of a sudden. We have to always be well prepared. And the Lord will lead us and guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what is planning? What is planning? Planning is a design for step-by-step -step approach to accomplishing a set of goals. Planning is a design for step-by-step -step approach to accomplishing a set of goals. So everybody, design step-by-step, -step, okay? So for me to succeed, for me to be, be rich, this is are the things I need to do. So you begin to plan step by step. You begin to plan step by step the things that you want to do to be successful. You understand what I'm saying? So planning is step by step approach to accomplishing a set goal. What is your goal? What is your goal? What is your plan? Hallelujah. So, okay, planning is ordering of one's priority in a bit to accomplishing a given task. You know, when you order your priority that, no, this one is more important. Well, you know what? I don't think we should travel right now. Let's focus on this. I don't think this is important. This is more important. That is planning. That is planning. Hallelujah. It is ordering one Ordering of one's priority in a bid to accomplishing a given task. You order your priorities. That's planning. That's planning. You order your priorities. It is a process of action in a quest to fulfill a dream. A process of action. Now, you want to fulfill something? So, um, uh, they always say that don't expect to succeed, but plan to succeed. Plan to succeed. Don't expect to succeed, but plan to succeed. Plan to succeed. Don't expect your children to succeed, but prepare them to succeed. You have to do something. Put things in place for your children to be successful. It has to be uh, 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 there, there has to be a plan. There has to be a sharp plan. So it takes sound planning to make a success of your business or life endeavor. It takes what? It takes, it takes sound planning to make a success of your business or life endeavor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me, let's see. Uh, the mother of all plans is brethren. Let's look at a story in the Bible. Let's look at a story in the Bible. Very interesting story. And it's the story of the ten virgins. Ten were prepared. The remaining, I mean, five were prepared. The remaining five, they weren't. This is a very, very important story. And all this story tells us is that as a believer, we all have to be prepared to meet our maker. Every time. You know, everything I do, I mean, if I screw up, I immediately begin to ask God for mercy and ask God that, Lord, take this away from me. Lord, help me with this. Help me with that. That, Lord, take away jealousy. Take away envy. Take away backbiting. Take away gossip. I'm just talking to the Lord and I'm asking God that, Lord, I don't want all of this in my life. Why? I'm preparing to meet my maker. When Jesus comes at any time, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Hallelujah. So let's look at Matthew 25 from verse 1. Matthew 25 from verse 1. 
Matthew 25 from verse 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Please note this. The kingdom of heaven. Be likened unto what? Ten virgins. Okay. You know, it's interesting that the Bible says ten virgins. God could have used ten whatever, but he said ten virgins. What does that tell us? It means that I believe, according to this scripture, God is talking to us about believers, not unbelievers. First of all, the Bible says the kingdom of God. Secondly, it says ten virgins. Hallelujah. Now, which took their lamp and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that we are all the bride of Christ. So it is certain that if we are going to meet the bride, our bridegroom, it means we are believers. You can't be a bride of Christ if you are not a believer. What makes you a bride of Christ is because you are a believer. So you are the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. So we are the bride of Christ. So we are going to meet our bridegroom. So it tells us clearly that these are believers, not unbelievers. So we are talking to believers at this point in time. And if you are not saved, you have to give your life to Christ. You have to surrender your life to Christ. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior because that's the only way to heaven. Let's continue. Bible says in verse 2, it says, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. So the topic of today is wisdom is planning. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Okay. So we should ask ourselves, all of these ten, they were virgins. All of these ten, they, they, they are the bride of Christ. They are all preparing to go and meet their bridegroom. So why are five wise and why are five foolish? Hallelujah. Let's read on, verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the Bible says, oh, verse 3, sorry, verse 3. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. The foolish did not take any oil with them. Hallelujah. The foolish did not take any oil. What did the wise do? They took oil with them. What does that mean? The foolish, they were not prepared. They were only living for now. They were not living for the future. What's the purpose of you taking oil with you? You have oil right now in your lamp. You have oil right now in your lamp. Why do you need oil? That's the future. You taking oil with you is you are thinking of the future. You are thinking of the future. But the foolish, they did not take oil. So they were just living for now. But Bible says, the wise, they took oil with them in their lambs. Verse 5, while the bridegroom tarry. You know, this is what we are facing right now, that Jesus, uh, we have been saying that Jesus is coming. So Jesus, that's why we say that, oh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm almost 50 and I'm going to be in my 70s if Jesus tarries. So we are saying that, hey, if Jesus decides, hey, I want to delay in coming. So we are saying that, if Jesus says, I want to delay in coming. So the Bible says, uh, uh, yeah, well, Jesus tarries. And uh, uh, while Jesus tarries, they all slumbered and sleep. And at midnight, at midnight, why must it be at midnight? Isn't that interesting? That Jesus showed up at midnight. Well, what does that mean? He showed up when they were unaware. When they were not aware. That's why he says at midnight. They were all sleeping. It represents a time whereby they weren't aware. Hallelujah. At midnight. There was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamb. Hallelujah. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamb are gone out. You see? You see? All of a sudden, Jesus shows up. 
The foolish were not ready. Right? They were living and enjoying life, having a blast of life. So let me tell you this. You may ask yourself, who are the foolish in this situation? Who are the foolish people in this situation? I tell you this. The people that are not ready for the coming of Christ. The people that don't have time to pray. They don't have time to go to church. They don't study the word of God. The, the people that they don't have things to do. They go around doing every other thing. We are not talking about unbelievers. We are talking about believers. And I want everybody to remember what Jesus Christ said in the, in, 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 in the word of God. That a judgment must begin at the house of the Lord if the righteous are scarcely saved. If the righteous are scarcely saved. So what's going on here? These people, what did they do? What did these people do? They were not ready. They only prepared for that time. They were not ready. Hallelujah. So Bible says, Then all of those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. They turned on their lamp when Jesus Christ came. And, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your lamp, oil, for our lambs are gone out. I'm sorry, everybody. I can't save you. You can't save me. I have to be ready myself. You have to be ready. We can't save each other. Every one of us, we have to be ready. Our, ourself. I love my children, but I can't save them. They have to be ready for Christ. They have to do what is right. I love my wife, but I can't save her. She has to be ready for Christ. She has to do what is right before Christ. And they can save me too. So when Jesus comes for me, right, they, they can tag along that, oh, he's my husband, he's my father. Or no, neither can I tag along. Every one of us, we are by ourselves. So you have to be ready yourself. You have to be prepared yourself. We can't save each other. Wisdom is planning. And the mother of all plans is what? What's the mother of all plan? You've been ready for Christ. That's the mother of all plan. You are ready for Christ. Hallelujah. You are ready for Christ. That's the mother of all plan. I'm telling you. You want to buy a house, you begin to save money. You begin to save money, you straighten your credit. You, you get a good job because you want to buy a house. Because you want to buy a house. You want to go to college, you go through high school first. You take all the necessary classes and so on and so forth. Right? You prepare. But you have to be prepared to meet your maker. It comes at any time. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's go on. Let's go on. So, but the wise answered saying, not so. Verse 9. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know, you have to be, as a believer, you have to be strict. You have to be strict. Don't let anybody derail you. Don't let anybody derail you. Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. So you have to take care of yourself first. If I don't have enough for myself, if what I'm going, if I'm, if I'm going to do something for you that will make it derail me, uh -uh, I'm not going to do it. Well, why would I give you my oil? Why would I give you my oil? When I know that if, I, if it's not going to be enough for both of us, I need the oil. To make it to heaven. I need my salvation. I'm not going to compromise because of you. I'm not going to do that. Hallelujah. So you must learn to say no. People are going to come to you and tell you to do something. You say no, 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 no. That is not what Jesus uh, said in the, in the word of God. That is not what Jesus Christ said in the word of God. Hallelujah. You have to stand with the word of God. Hallelujah. So... Afterwards, verse 11, afterwards came also the other virgins saying, okay, uh, verse 10, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came 
And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Ha! Hallelujah. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I can imagine, I can imagine today in church, on Wednesday like this, and I can imagine that rapture happens uh, shortly before service starts. I can imagine that rapture happens. And I'm preparing to come to service and rapture happens and I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm, I'm, by the grace of God, I'm definitely going with rapture. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm going with rapture. And everybody that says, we don't have time, we are tired, and so on and so forth, you will see that 7 o'clock, this place will be flooded with people. It will be flooded with people. But it's too late. The door is already shut. The door is already shut. The door is shut. All the excuses don't matter. They don't matter anymore. Hallelujah. The door is shut. And our prayer is that uh, anybody can shut any door against you. That's fine. So far it's not Jesus that shuts the door. Because when he shuts the door, nobody can open. When the Lord shuts the door, nobody can open. So, so long as it's not Jesus shutting the door against you. Because it doesn't matter that Jesus will open the door that anybody shuts. Because it says, I, shut, I open the door before you and nobody can shut it. He opens the door and nobody can shut it. But if it's Jesus shutting the door, forget it. Hallelujah. So be ready. They went away to go and get it. So they weren't ready. They weren't prepared. They did not plan. So they did not plan. They did not plan. So that's when, when rapture happens, people will begin to take the Bible. When rapture happens, people will begin to move and do stuff when rapture happens. Hallelujah. We don't want that. You want to be ready. You want to go with them. You want to have your oil with you. You want to have your oil in your lamp. There's a song we always sing uh, uh, way, way back. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. Oh, Lord. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the day you come. Something like that. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. And the song goes on like that. Hallelujah. You want to be on fire until Jesus Christ comes. You want to be caught in church. You don't want to be, you know, you want to be caught in church. You want to be caught doing the will of God. You want to be caught serving God when Jesus Christ comes. You know what Jesus Christ said to us? He said, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. The people were not ready for him. What were they doing? The Bible says they were getting married and giving a marriage. The Bible says they were drinking and they were getting drunk. The Bible says they were eating and drinking. They were having parties. They were having parties. Nobody wants to be where the Lord is. Nobody wants to do the purpose and the plan of God until the flood came. He says that's exactly the way it's going to be. The Bible says, the Bible says, but he Bible says, he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, oh, 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 verse 11, after, Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Open to us. Do you know what that means, that Lord open to us? You know what that means? I'll tell you what it means. It means rapture happen, people are coming to church. And saying, Lord, have mercy. Rapture happens, and all of these people are coming to church. They are looking for Christ. They are saying, oh my God, pastor preached about this. That's open to us. Verse 12, but he answered and said, verily I say unto you, I know you not. You know, you know, you know, that is very, very scary for Jesus to say such a thing. That is very, very scary for Jesus to say such a thing. I tell you, I downplayed it because if Jesus is saying this while you are still living here on earth, it's great. It's terrific. Because why is it great and terrific? Because you have an opportunity to repent. Because you still are living here on earth. It's a horrible thing 
when the person is dead, thinking they are going to make it to heaven, and Jesus Christ says, I know you not. Look at what Jesus Christ said. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Look at, look at the whole summary of the story. Look at the conclusion of the matter. Look at what Jesus Christ said. He said, watch therefore. I've told you what that watch is. And uh, I don't know when it was. I think it was sometimes this week. I was just reading the Bible about this watch, watch, watch. Watch, 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 watch. It's the word that is used the most when Jesus spoke about his, his second coming. He kept telling us, watch, watch, watch. Watch means that you have to be ready at every point in time. That is what watch means. Watch means, let, let me give you a better explanation of that word watch. Jesus Christ said something. He said that if you know that a thief is coming to your house, will you not watch? Tell me, how would you watch if you know a thief is coming to your house? How, what would you do? If, I, if, I, if, a, if a thief tells you, I'm going to be at your house between 2 and 4 a.m., in the middle of the night, if you know it's coming, what will you do? If you want to really understand what that watch means, I tell you, first of all, you will alert the police, you will have security system, you will change your locks, you will make sure your lock is on point, and you will stay awake. You will not even be sleeping. You will be stay awake, you will be parading through your house, you will be going, you will check the window, and so on and so forth, you will check. Brethren, it's like they tell people that hurricane, a very, very hurricane is coming. In level category five, what do people begin to do? People in those areas, they begin to board their windows. They begin to board their windows because they know something is coming. They tell them that the hurricane is coming at a particular time. So what do they do? Every one of them begin to board their window. Right? They are watching. They are awake. They are not snoring at that time. That is what it means to watch. That is what it means to prepare. When Jesus Christ says watch, so in translation to what is watch when it comes to the kingdom of God, what is watch when it comes to the kingdom of God is that you are always ready. You are in church. You are studying the word of God. You are praying. You are, you are in prayer meetings. You are doing all spiritual things. Walk in the spirit so that you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. That is what watch means. So we have to be prepared. And that is exactly what happened to these five virgins. They were only ready for now. They were not prepared for the future. They only do things were well, only on Sundays and so on and so forth. They were not prepared for the future. When they get home, that's it. Hallelujah. We have to watch. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So Bible says in verse 12, but he answered and said, verily I say unto you, I know you not. I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know, neither, you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We have established something that uh, unbelievers don't expect to make it to heaven. Unbelievers, do the, so we are not talking about unbelievers. They did not give their lives to Christ. They were not saved. But these are believers that Jesus Christ told them I know you not but I want you to see this same scripture that where Jesus Christ repeated it in another story where he said I know you not it's, it's very very scary for you to know that these 10 virgins they were believers but they were not prepared they were not prepared they give all manner of excuses why they cannot do the things of God they tell them that no I can't do this because of my children you know, I have to take care of my children. But when they go to grocery store, because they know they have to eat, they pull their children with them. They, they give reasons why they can't do the things of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. But we know that one day, Jesus Christ is definitely coming. Look at this story that is very, uh, 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 very, very... Uh, <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
Look at the story. Let me read on that story. On that interesting story. Uh, that mentions, that says the same thing about I know you not. So we just read the story of the ten virgins. Look at this story in Luke 13, 23. Luke 13, 23. Luke 13, 23. Luke 13, 23. Bible says, Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Look at the question they asked Jesus. Are there few that, that will be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, we seek to enter in and shall not be able. Brethren, I always love it when we look at the choice of words that the Bible uses. It says, strive. Do you know what strive means? Strive is not something that is easy. It's not straightforward. Strive, it requires effort. It requires for you to serve God when it's not convenient. It requires to do things. He now says here, he says, strive to enter into the tricky, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter and shall not be able to. Many people will want to enter the straight gate and shall not be able to. Many, many. Remember the question they asked Jesus. Are there many that will be saved? Now, look at verse 25. The Bible says, When once the master of the house is risen up and had shut to the, 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 the door and began to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. See the same thing? The same thing about the ten virgins. What happened? They were not ready. They were not ready. They were not ready. You know, I fear God because God is telling us that not all believers that say they are believers, that call, that are called in the name of the Lord right now, not all of us are going to make it to heaven. Not all of us are going to be raptured. Not all of us. Some of us are just playing. We are playing church. Some of us, we are playing with our salvation. So Jesus Christ is telling us. He says, verse 25, or verse 25 of Luke 13, he says, Whence once the master of the house is risen up and had shut to the door, and he begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. First of all, unbelievers will call Jesus Lord. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunken in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall, but he shall say, I tell you, I know ye not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye worker of iniquity. Ah. Oh. Jesus. Let's try to understand. <laughs> I want everybody to get this. I want everybody to get this. And I want you to really understand this. Now, Jesus said, I mean, the people said, then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. Do you know what that means? We came to church. We were at that party where Jesus was. We were there. So they are saying all of these things, thinking that that is all that is required to be saved. Hallelujah. Everybody, take your life serious. Be prepared for your maker. Be prepared for the coming of Christ. Jesus is going to show up soon. I tell you this, Jesus may not show up. I mean, rapture may not happen, but any one of us can die at any time. And when we die at any time before rapture happens, it means we have gone to meet our maker. So we have, we must always be ready at all times. Every time we must be ready. Every time we must be ready at all times for Jesus. 
we have to live a life that is holy and righteous. We have to live a life that is pure. We have to pray. We have to seek the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 15 now says, There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself trust out. And they shall come from the east, and from the west, and from north and south, and shall sit in the kingdom of God. And behold, there, there are last which shall be false, and there are false which shall be last. So the people that you think will be in heaven, they will not be there. The people that you think will not be there, those are the people that will be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, let me show you another, let me show you another one. Let me show you another one. You know, it's so interesting that in all of these stories, they call the Lord twice. He said, Lord, 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 Lord. Everybody, in Matthew 7, 21, Matthew 7, 21, Matthew 7, 21, Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in, into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Again, Jesus Christ is saying, it's not everybody that you, stay, that you think come to church. It's not everybody that you see that are in the choir. You know, everybody singing in the choir. It's not everybody that is on the keyboard or on the drums. It's not everybody that is a pastor. It's not everybody that is an evangelist, a prophet, a teacher. That will make it to the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus Christ is saying here. It's not every usher. It's not every uh, 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 pray, praying person. Hallelujah. That will make it to the kingdom of heaven. Again, again, again. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. See again, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name I've cast out devils. And in thy name I've done many wonderful works. They are trying to justify the reason why they need to make it to heaven. Forgetting that God is a righteous judge. And again, same thing that Jesus told the previous ones. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, walk, ye that walk iniquity. Ye that live a sinful life. Jesus Christ said, I did not know you. I want to encourage everybody. You have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. Bible says in Matthew 24, 35, Matthew 24, 35, Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth, everything will pass away, not the word of God. What the God has said will come to pass. I don't joke. I don't play. I don't play with my, with my life. When it comes to God, I fear God because I know God can take me out anytime. God can, God can frustrate my life. God can afflict me with sickness and disease. I fear God. That God can make me more, ma 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 maim. God can make me handicapped. I fear God that God can do and undo. I fear God that God can destroy in hell. God can make me mentally deranged. God can, God can give me a way to reprobate minds. I, those are the reasons I fear God. But above all, God is so good. God is so kind. That you know that if you come unto God, he will accept you. He will accept you. He will accept you if you come unto God. Hallelujah. God will accept you. So wisdom is what? Planning. Planning for what? Planning for Christ. Planning. That's the mother of all planning. Forget every other planning if you're not planning for this one. Forget every other planning. You have to plan for Christ. You have to plan for heaven. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this, and then I, I'll read uh, one more scripture. Uh, probably uh, two, two more scriptures. But, but let me say this. And I've said this too many times in this church. The way you have to think of this is this. I mean, once God revealed it to me, it opened my eyes. Heaven is eternity. Hell is eternity. That's what the Bible says, and that's what we believe. 
But for you to really understand it, let's put a number of years to eternity. Eternity has no years, but let's put a number of years to it. Imagine you have to live your life 80 billion years in heaven. And you have to live 80 years on earth. Which one is more important? Which one do you want to prepare for more? Which one would you like to prepare for more? The 80 years on earth or the 80 billion years? Whether in heaven or in hell. God forbid. Hell will not be our portion in Jesus' name. But think of it. Which one do you want to prepare for more? Here on earth. So we go around. And that is what happened to the ten virgins. They were only focused on the things for now. The ten virgins were only focused for the things for now. So they, they did not have the oil that would take them, the extra oil that would take them to heaven. They only had the oil in their lamp for this current world, for this current lifetime. So they were doing the normal stuff in this world. They were prepared for the 80 years on earth. They never prepared for the 80 years, 80 billion years in heaven. Again, heaven is not 80 billion years, it's eternity. So they, 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 they never prepared for that. They did not prepare for that. So imagine, all of us, if you know that 80 billion years, 80, not million, not 80 billion years, oh, I need to seriously prepare for that. Why would I spend my time preparing for 80 years? I, I, I think I, I want 80 billion, not 80 years. We, that's, that's the way we should look at it. Hallelujah. 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 Now, what should we do? Let's round up with this. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Let's see the story of an insect. Ant, it's called an ant. An ant. We know how tiny the ant is. God is amazing the way he creates various animals. You just have to bow to God. The Bible says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Remember, wisdom is planning. Wisdom is planning. So Bible says, go to the ant. So, I mean, if ant were able to talk, we should say, ant, <laughs> I was told to come to you. Thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. So, you see, Bible says what? Consider her ways. What does that mean? It means check out the behavior, how an ant behaves and be wise. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, pro, verse 8, provided a meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Hallelujah. Do you see that? He provides her meat in the summer and gathers her meat in the harvest. Hallelujah. Do you know that ants don't show up every time? Do you know that they have a season where they show up? Do you know that? But where are the ants? Where are they? They are somewhere. Provides her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. It's like animals that hibernate. You know, some animals like bears and some other animals that will sleep for six, um, six months and they will uh, come out for six months. So the six months, they, are, they, need, they, they already know that, oh, I'm going into hibernation, so I have to be well prepared. So they keep eating to be fat. So they eat to be fat, 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 fat. So that when they go into hibernation, right, they can come out alive. So he says, how long without sleep? Verse 9. How long without sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to sleep. So shall poverty come as one that traveleth, and, uh, and thy want as an armed man. So... Everybody, let us get up. Let us be ready. 
Let us begin to plan. Let us begin to put things in place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 27. Proverbs 24 verse 27. Proverbs 24 verse 27. It says, prepare thy work without. Prepare. 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 I mean, if somebody that wants to cook for uh, uh, hundreds of people, they will have been doing some certain preparation. They, okay, they will boil the meat. Uh, sometimes they do something overnight. Sometimes it's preparation. Prepare thy work without and make it fit to thyself in thy field. And after all, build thy house. So there's a preparation stage that we need to go through, everybody. We have to be prepared. We have to be prepared for the coming of Christ. We have to be prepared. Every one of you, be ready. You have to prepare. There are some other areas of preparation that we did not focus on today. But the most important one is what we focus on. The most important one is what, what is focused on. And of course, you know, there's something interesting, right, about this story about Joseph and the, uh, the, the king of uh, uh, Pharaoh when there was famine. So, I mean, just to summarize the story, we know a lot about the story. What happened is that there was famine and Joseph, I mean, Joseph was in prison and they called Joseph that, hey, come and interpret the king's dream. And Joseph came and said, ah, this is what's going to happen. Then I, I want you to see something. Uh, 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 I want you to see something. Let's just uh, round up with this. It's in Genesis 41. Genesis 41. I want you to see something, right? I said, wisdom is planning. It says, now, uh, uh, let's start from verse 31. Genesis 41, 31. It says, and the plenty shall not be known uh, in the land by the reason of the famine. So, they will completely forget about the plenty, the seven years of plenty, because of the famine, because the famine will be so bad. So, uh, uh, for following, uh, 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 by the reason of the famine, following, for it shall be very grievous. Very grievous means very bad. Okay, look at verse 32. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I tell you you, you, you see a thing in the Bible, you are, you are encouraged. So, it tells us that when, when you hear God say something twice. I just said that those people are saying, Lord, Lord. When you hear God say something twice, verily, verily, I say unto you. He says, uh, at the mouth of two shall the things be established. He says here, it, for, for that reason, because he says it was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the, the, the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 33. Look at verse 33, which is where I want us to say. He says, now therefore, let Pharaoh look for a man discreet and wise. Wise. Wisdom is what? Planning. And set him over the land. Let Pharaoh do this. And let him appoint officers over the land and take off the fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that cometh and lay up corns under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep the food in the city and that the food shall be stored and, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Pharaoh said, uh, no, 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 no. You, you don't understand. <laughs> you might be coming from the prison but I've not seen anybody as wise as you. Why is he wise? He's planning for the future. Remember, this, at this point, the, the seven plenty years had not occurred. So we are talking about not just, uh, we are talking about, he was planning for uh, the next seven to 14 years, or technically the next 14 years. 14 years, one four. Hallelujah. He was planning for 14 years. So during the first seven years, he says, let's take 20% uh, of every uh, plenty and let's skip it. 20%. And let's keep it. What's wisdom? Wisdom is planning. Planning. Let's keep it. Let's set it aside. You 
You know, some of you that are very young, uh, if you plan very well, you can retire at 40. Some of you, you, if you plan very well, you can retire at 50 or 60. You plan in various areas. Wisdom is planning. What Joseph told them is, keep 20%, a fifth of everything. Keep a fifth of everything. And that's what they did. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you the praise. I worship you. Thank you for your word. Oh, God, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord, I give you the glory. I magnify you. I exalt you. You are worthy. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want you to pray. Ask God for that wisdom. That planning wisdom. Ask God. In the name of Jesus. The Lord give me that type of wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give me that type of wisdom to plan. To plan for every area. To plan for my children. To plan for everything. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, help me to plan. Help me to plan, oh God. I pray for that wisdom to be able to plan adequately for my family, for my children, for retirement. Help me. Give me wisdom to plan. Lord, help me prepare for my next job. Help me prepare for my next career, my next business. Help me to be prepared in the name of Jesus. Give me the wisdom, oh God. I want to be well prepared. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for your wisdom in the precious name of Jesus, oh God. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. To plan a accordingly to plan adequately father give me that wisdom in the name of jesus father wisdom to plan father brethren talk to the lord 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 talk to the lord, to the lord. you cannot eat with your ten fingers you can't you can't eat with your ten fingers you cannot eat with your ten fingers i'm telling you Oh, Marikebu Shekeba Rikeba Baba 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 Reseketi Rikeba. Lord, I'm asking of you, O God, in the name of Jesus. Ah, Marikebu Shekeba Rakatari Katari Kataria Lasi Katari Bu Shekeba. Father. I pray for that wisdom to plan adequately, to plan accordingly in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God. Wisdom to plan for ministry. Wisdom to plan for ministry, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you for your word, O oh God. Father, wisdom to plan for ministry in the name of Jesus. We ask of you, Father, for that wisdom. O oh Lord of heaven, give us that wisdom to plan for ministry. O oh God, wisdom, give it to us. We want to plan for ministry. We want to plan for the work in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory. We worship you. We adore you. We exalt you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We are grateful. We are thankful, O God, in the precious name of Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy of all glory, all honor, all adoration belongs to you forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God will give you divine wisdom. The wisdom of planning. The wisdom of preparation. The wisdom to watch in the name of Jesus. None of you will be found wanting. If you are not saved, make sure you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to be prepared for heaven. That's the greatest plan you can ever make. To be prepared to meet your maker. 
you are going to spend eternity with God. So make sure you are prepared for that. You definitely don't want to spend time in hell. You don't want to spend a second in hell. You want to spend eternity with Christ. We want to see God. So prepare your life. Straighten your life. And God will touch you. God will meet you in the name of Jesus. I want you to talk to the Lord. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we are grateful once again for your word. We ask that it will bring forth fruit in 30, 60, and 100 fold in Jesus' name. And our lives will never be the same again forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Brethren, it's time to give unto the Lord. It's time to give unto the Lord. You know, we take offerings on Wednesdays. And I want everybody to give joyfully. I want you to give happily. I want you to give from the bottom of your heart to the depth of your soul. It's time to give unto the Lord. Let us give, let us give, let us give unto the Lord. Everybody, let us give joyfully. I want you to be excited. Um, text to give is on the, uh, uh, if you see it, it's right there. Text to give. Let's give to, to, uh, towards the work of God. You know, out of that which God has given unto you. You know, give back unto him. You may say, Pastor, you don't understand. It's not enough. Trust God. You know, that lead to that is not enough. It is still God that provided it for you. It is still God that gave it to you. I'm telling you, that lead to that is not enough, it's still God. Why don't you trust him and put it in his hands? So God says, pay your tithe. Your tithe is 10% of your income. Give it unto God. It belongs to God. Your tithe is not for the pastor. Your tithe is not for the church. It's to the Lord. And God just said that you must pay it in the storehouse, which is the house of God. Hallelujah. So give it to the Lord. And give your offering joyfully from the bottom of your heart to the depth of your soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, accept this offering from us. Use it for the glorification of your kingdom and the furtherance of your work. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people that they will have multiplied harvest. In the name of Jesus, they will never run dry. Before the need will arise, the supplies will be waiting. Before they call unto you, you will hear them. And while they are yet speaking, you will answer them. You will meet them at the point of their needs, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, you will open doors unto them. You will make a way for them concerning everything that concerns them. Bible talks about obedidom. Bible says he was blessed and everything that pertains to him. Father, I pray for your people that you will bless them and all that pertains to them, their spouses, their children, their homes, oh Lord, their businesses, their jobs, their, their family, their careers. Father, uh, their health, you will bless everything that pertains to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name will be glorified in their lives forever and ever. They will not miss it. They will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. We say blessed be your name forever and ever. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus name. Let's share the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>